I love Islam. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Assalatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah Salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh To all the viewers and especially Especially our children and our youngsters. You, know, you can see the set around you, mashallah, so even my tone of speaking has changed today as well. Because our program, I Love Islam, is for the younger viewers, for the teenagers, inshallah. So and for yourself, we bought a very beautiful segments, inshallah. So You'll see through uh, the program, in a, hopefully, that we're not just going to talk about some very beautiful facts. But we're also going to learn a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu mm -hmm. every week. So I'm so going so to inshallah. introduce, uh, mashallah, the sabur by uh, agony uncle is normally, but mashallah, the sabur by is uh, in the studio with us today mm -hmm. in this program. So hopefully, inshallah, like I said, uh, this is uh, for the younger viewers. And that doesn't mean that the adults can switch off and watch somewhere else. It's for the parents as well. So it's for the children. It's for the parents and it's for the teenagers. So hopefully, Sabarbay, are you excited with this new program? Mashallah. Yeah, you it's know what like more of a family, like a family power. So it's not that the parents will go away and the children will be. It's for the whole family. family. That's what we wanted a, a program so that it's for the whole family. So please don't go anywhere else. This is your program. We want you to watch it. We want you to learn and we want you to participate in that. So the first segment we are going to be talking about is the first segment name is Did You Know? Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I love Islam I love Islam I love Islam Did you know? Now this segment it's uh, today we're going to be learning about the facts about our Creator, Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of the very important things are, as Muslims, what we need to believe in, and as Muslims, you know, what we should teach our children as well. So, inshallah Azza wa Jal, the first fact about Allah Azza wa Jal we're going to learn is about the uniqueness about Allah Azza wa Jal. There are many places in the Quran that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions about Himself as well, and one of the Famous uh, surah, surat ikhlas. You know, the uniqueness of Allah Ta'ala that He has no family, He has no children, he's no, He doesn't have any wives, He doesn't have parents. That is the uniqueness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet, if you look at the creation of Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala has created the, uh, the creation in pairs. In regards to uh, the surah ikhlas, it mentions that, um, that He is not father to anyone. Indeed. So this is one of the beliefs that you know, a very important beliefs, fundamental very important belief that he is not father to anyone, neither is he a son to anyone, Indeed. and nor does he have a wife. And and then it mentions that uh, if anyone claims that he is the father or son of anyone, or he says that Allah has a wife, then he is an unbeliever out of the so fold of, of Islam. Of Islam. So and I even and to the extent that it says that even if one thinks it to be possible, then that person is misled as well. See, so again, you know, the, so this is a very important belief for the children that Allah Azza wa Jal is unique. Like the Haji Sahib said, he has no parents. He is not a son of anyone. Allah Azza wa Jal is unique in himself. And also, 
The other, the uniqueness or the fact about Allah Ta'ala is that Allah is the only creator. You know, in Islam, we do not believe in any other creators. Allah Azza wa Jal is the Khalik, He is the one who created, we are the makhluk, we are the creation. So here we need to understand that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who created the whole universe. In Islam, we do not believe that Allah Ta'ala has partners or, you know, sometimes people, you know, this stunning thought will come into your mind. You know, how did Allah Ta'ala create the whole universe? You know, surely there must be someone to help him. Now, this is a satanic verse. That is a satanic whisper. And we need to read Tawbah. We need to always do Tawbah. That Ya Allah Azza wa Jal keep us away from these whispers of the shaitan. And that Allah Ta'ala is the absolute truth. There is no uh, other creator than Allah Azza wa Jal himself. Anyone who says that he does have another partner. You know, if you have a king in a country... And, you know, he can run the affairs of that country. You know, he controls everything. But if you have two kings, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have, you know, um, fights and disagreements. Mm-hmm. And therefore, Allah Azza wa Jal is the king of all the universe. So Allah Ta'ala is the one who has created everything. There is no other than Allah Azza wa Jal himself. The third fact about Allah Azza wa Jal is, Allah is the most merciful. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal is the most merciful. Allah Ta'ala is known to be Muslims as the most merciful being. It is only because of His mercy that even we commit sins, He lets them go and gives us many chances as well. You know, just for the children, you know, just to give you a glimpse of like the merciness, it's like a small child, whenever he has a problem or is hurt, or he wants something, he cries, and who does he seek for? He seeks for the mother. He runs towards the mother or parents. Um, but especially the mother, because the child is from a small age, is very close to the mother. Ji. Now, uh, so the mother to the child is like the most merciful. Subhanallah. And then when you take it a step further, and, and we learn that Allah Azawajal is 70 times more merciful, than the mother. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So it just gives you, especially for the younger viewers, especially the children, it gives them a little bit of an understanding that how merciful, how loving, how caring a mother is to the child. And then Allah Azawajal is 70 times more merciful. So it's like having, uh, you know, everything to be increased 70 times, you know, the love, the mercifulness, the caring, everything is multiplied 70 times. Just like, you know, our parents, you know, your parents might look after you at home, but sometimes our parents be angry on us as well though. So, so, you know, when we say that Allah Ta'ala is most merciful, He might punish us for the bad things that we've done. But that does not always mean that Allah Ta'ala doesn't like us. You know, Allah Ta'ala loves us. That is why sometimes He will punish us so that we don't be punished on the Day of Judgment. There's something I was reading that somebody, uh, somebody who, who is the Beloved, to Allah and it mentions in the narration that the person who fulfills his faraiz, his obligatory acts, is close to Allah Subhanallah. So what we need to do is we need to be getting close to Allah Ta'ala and if we do, for children, for little children, even if they commit sins, they're not written down as sins until they've become an adult, they become a balil. So Allah Ta'ala is the most merciful he is more merciful than our parents. He is more merciful than any person we know in the dunya. Allah Azza wa Jal is the most merciful. So here, you know, this is for the children and for the teenagers as well. If you do commit a sin, always ask Allah Azza wa Jal for repentance. Ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive you. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, Allah Ta'ala will be merciful. Mentions regarding uh, the forgiveness that, you know, uh, repenting or repentance, should you say that when somebody commits a sin, that he should repent. Ji. And then it's as if that he didn't commit a sin. Commit that sin, Ji. subhanallah. You know, but in the dunya, if you look at it, if you do anything wrong, you know, you might get punished for that, you might get fined, you might get imprisoned. But in the court Ji. of Allah Ta'ala, you know, if we do accept our faults, now this Ji. is something that we need to build in our hearts as well, that I've done something wrong, maybe, you know, your, your mom or your dad told you to do something, and you didn't do that. So ask your parents to forgive them. Inshallah, they will forgive you. 
But Allah Ta'ala is the most forgiving on the day of judgment. If we say that, Ya Allah, I was disobedient to my mother, I was disobedient to my father, I should have listened to them, Allah Ta'ala will forgive you as well. And the other beautiful fact about Allah Azza wa Jal is that He is the all-knowing. And it is true that Allah Ta'ala knows what is in our hearts. You know, sometimes, you know, this question might uh, arise in our hearts. How does Allah know what is in my heart? How does Allah know? Now, wherever we are, Allah is all-knowing. We can't keep any secrets from Allah Azza wa Jal. Maybe I can keep a secret from my mom. Maybe I can keep a secret from my dad. But you can never ever keep a secret from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah's knowledge, he, it encompasses everything. It covers everything. And, it does his, and, and so does His mercy and His wisdom. There is nothing in the heavens or in the earth that escapes the notice of Allah Azza wa Jal. We can't say that I'm going to hide under the bed. Allah will not be able to see me. Yeah? yeah, Allah can see you under the bed. You can't say I'm going to go into a bunker underneath the ground where Allah cannot see me. He can see you there as well. In fact, to make it short, there is nowhere in the planet, in the universe, where a person can hide and Allah Ta'ala cannot see him. Allah Ta'ala can see him all the time as well. This is like, I think you mentioned earlier as well regarding even the thought, even something that you've thought about or something that's in the heart and one hasn't even expressed it. Yeah. Yeah, Allah really even knows that. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. The next fact about Allah Azza wa Jal is He is the loving one. Allah Ta'ala loves His creation. And it says, we mentioned that He loves His creation 70 times more than mothers love their children. So can you imagine if Allah Azza wa Jal loves you, how much love we should have towards our Creator and how much love we should have towards the creation. Especially, you know, you might be at home with your brother, with your sister, or with your other siblings. Now, if you love them, love them for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't have hatred about anyone in your heart. Love everyone, Allah Ta'ala will love you as well. And one of the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal's creation is that He has instilled love in us as well as signs of Him. These are the signs that Allah Ta'ala loves His creation because He's full love. Have you ever seen animals, how much they love their children as well? Indeed. Yeah. So, you know, for example, you might see uh, a little baby goat. What do you call a baby goat? You call it a lamb. Le well, a me be baby lamb. The yeah, baby lamb. Yeah, so it's called a lamb. How a mother, you know, treats the lamb. It will look after it. Even baby chickens, I don't know. Uh, if the viewers, our children, have seen little baby chickens, you know, what color are they normally? So different with, colors. Different, uh, multi-colored uh, ones. Uh, see, this is also, if you, everything is created by Allah. These uh -huh. are wonders or marvels of, uh, of the Creator. That Sometimes you'll have a white chicken and it'll have babies and they'll be brown and gray and, and, you know, and ginger, blonde. They've got different colors. MashaAllah. I have seen a lot of yellow. The chickens. You know, in Pakistan, when we went there uh, for my son, and we bought some little baby chickens. But we need to make sure that we don't, you know, get them damaged. You know, because kids when they Very play, easily. I've, I've heard of children where they they they, they grab, you know, they, they squeeze in them and they are biting them. Indeed. You know, so don't ever do that to a live creature, whoever, whatever yeah. creature that is. We should be merciful. We should be living towards these creatures as well. Because if Allah Ta'ala is loving towards us, yes. that means we should be loving towards our Creator as well. Now, the other thing about Allah Ta'ala, He is the maintainer of life. He is the giver of life and it is only through His grace that we breathe as we are unable to function our daily lives. And Allah Ta'ala has mentioned that in the Quran as well, that it is He who gives life to someone. Yeah, and it is He who will take life of a person. So no person or no other being is what gives life. It is only Allah and He is the one. You know, you could be in a situation where there was a, a young child and he fell off an eight-story building and he fell, it was, you know, luckily it wasn't the ground, he fell straight into a bin, yeah? And he came outside and he ran off. You know, so from wow. an eight-story, Allah is the maintainer of life. You know, if, if your death is not written, nothing can take you away. It's like... Uh, 
just recent, well, a little while back in Pakistan where the airplane crashed. And then there was even survivors there. Everybody else died. And I think two people one survived. One or two people survived. Yeah. Because their time wasn't up. It was a given. Masha, so Allah Ta'ala is the maintainer of life. Our best friend should be our creator, should be our sustainer. Now, here, you know, when it was someone you know, like you have your best friend, you will make sure that you protect your friend from every problems, every bad things, every wrong things. In the same way, Allah Azza wa Jal will protect us. If we become his best friends, Allah Azza wa Jal will protect us as well. Our children who are watching, they need to be really starting to do their namaz, you know, yes. start to read the durood e respect their parents. So the more good you are at home, yes. you know, sometimes parents, they reward their children by giving them sweets or something. Yes. Now Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared such a beautiful reward for his friends on the day of judgment that he will give you the best place to live and that is paradise. Um, and if you can just tell us a bit about what paradise is. Um, uh, there's so many narrations and regarding paradise and the things, the things which you, you can't even imagine. Ji. So uh, You haven't even seen haven't even these seen things. And you haven't, it's like, for example, things that you're going to eat, for example. Those things you've never, you've, you've tasted, you know, we all have favorite types of food, we all have favorite uh, fruits and different um, things that we eat, but those uh, tastes would be those, such tastes which have never been tasted. It's like an example, grapes, uh, it, it mentions that uh, in paradise there is grapes, but those grapes would not taste like grapes that we have here, because we have sweet grapes, we have sour grapes, sometimes you pick a, a grape looks so yeah. beautiful and, and juicy and you want to eat it, but when you eat it, it's, it's not sour. necessarily be sweet, Indeed. it's sour. But those grapes of paradise, for example, the taste will be unique and it'll be a taste which you'll have never tasted, a, a, a taste that your mouth, your tongue will never have tasted. And it also, that each one won't be, it's like you've eaten one and the second Indeed. one that you eat, won't, the taste won't be the same. It'll be as if each taste is unique. And um, if you're wanting to eat something, for example, in paradise, you'll think of something and it'll come prepared in front of Masha you. Allah. For yeah, example, so a bird is flying, uh, a pigeon or a bird or yeah. something is flying across and you desire to eat that, it'll come prepared in front of Subhanallah. you. Subhanallah. Just imagine how lucky we shall be on the Day of Judgment. You know, whatever you wish to eat, will there be ice cream in paradise? That's something, because like I say, I, you know, the, these ice cream can cause harm as well. Yeah. But in paradise, Everything that will be in paradise will not cause you any harm. So sometimes children will ask, Oh, could we have chocolate in paradise? Yeah, you know, you know, you're going to have better things than chocolate. Mm -hmm. Chocolate is nothing. It messes up your clothes. And then, you know, when you eat chocolate, it comes onto your mouth and everything. But in it paradise, it, it, gives, you it gives you toothache as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you get a toothache and you start crying and then, you know, it, it causes you pain. But mm -hmm. inshallah, paradise is something that you know we've never thought of you've never thought of paradise and you will get that inshallah so alhamdulillah well, you know that brings us to the end of our first segment but just to recap everything as muslims we believe in one allah we believe that allah is our creator he is our sustainer he is the one who gives us food i asked a little child who gives food to us my mom yeah, so obviously your mom cooks that food, yeah. but where does she get it from? Yeah. You know, it was a big argument that where does your, my mom gets it from the supermarket. Yeah, so where does the supermarket get it from? They must get it from the farmers. Where do the farmers get it from? They get it from the field. Where does it come into the field? It is Allah who gives you that. Yeah. You know, so Alhamdulillah, everything, it goes back to Allah Azza wa Jal. So children, inshallah Azza wa Jal, this is what we need to learn ourselves as well. Whatever we've learned today, inshallah, let's make that good intention that we will pass this on to our friends as well. You know, when you go to school in the morning, that's if you go to school in the morning, yeah, go and tell your friends that we were watching, I love Islam and we learned about Allah. The more you tell other people, the more these people will learn and your friends will learn about Allah. So if you're making that intention, Put your hand up, inshallah. I, I make that intention. You make that intention as well. Let's go to schools, to madrasa, wherever we are going, and let's tell people <coughs> about our Creator, Allah Azza wa Jal. We've got some 
uh, videos that we want to show you as well. We're going to, you know, children who have sent us their talent, we're going to play them on air. Let's go towards some of the videos that we have of our beautiful, talented children. I am Bilal Ali Atari from Birmingham, UK, and I want to read a surah that I have learned from Madrasa Al Madina. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. La a'budu ma ta'budun. Wa la antum abidun ma a'budu. وَلَا عَنَ عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينُ And I want to share a dua with you that I read every day before sleeping. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahiya. Oh Allah, with your name I die and get resurrected. Wa ala aliku wa ashabiki ya habib Allah. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad. Sulti wa khidu wa allahumma bismika amutu wa ahiya. La ilaha. La ilaha. Illa al. Illa al. Allahu. محمد رسول الله يا الله you gave us this eye يا الله you gave us this mouth يا الله you gave us this tongue يا الله you gave us this ear يا الله you gave this nose يا الله يا الله Make me be very good and pious and be very kind to people and uh, tell people good stuff, not bad stuff. Be very good and be very nice to people and stop swearing. <laughs> لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت أبدا أبدا ذو الجلال والإكرام بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير ما شاء الله ما شاء الله جيد سبب you know, we saw these beautiful kids reciting سورة الكافرون and uh, doing some kalam as well and it's so beautiful to see them any that you recognize MashaAllah. Okay, so we has rec recognized some of the children. Now, inshallah, we're going to move to our next segment. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. Now, oh, this is going to be an exciting one. What we're going to do is we're going to learn a very beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want everyone to be participating in that. If you are at home watching this 
I want you to learn this hadith. We'll talk about it as well, what it means. And the hadith part is, Al-Birru Husnul Khuluqi. Goodness is the name of good character. We're going to learn this by Ha, inshallah. Yeah? So repeat after me. Can we have it on the screen again? I've already forgotten it. Ji. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Husnul. Khuluqi. Khuluqi. Now the children at home are going to repeat as well, inshallah. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Husnul. Khuluqi. Khuluqi. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Husnul. Khuluqi. Khuluqi. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Khuluqi. Khuluqi. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Khuluqi. Husnul. Khuluqi. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Khuluqi. Khuluqi. Al-Birru. Al-Birru. Husnul. Khuluqi. Khuluqi. Which hadith is in which book? Sahih Sahi Muslim. Muslim. Hadith number 2553. The translation is goodness is the name of good character. See if you can learn this hadith. The more we're going to learn, inshallah, you know, in these few weeks, every Sunday, we will learn a hadith apart. Sabur bhai, inshallah, what was the hadith apart? Al-birru husnul khuluq. Goodness is the name of good character. You know, so for us to have a good character, al-birru Husnul Khuluki is the name of good character. Well, can you define or tell us what good character is? What should we have as a good character? For example, if you're uh, speaking to somebody, you'd converse in a polite, polite and manner, a kind manner. If you're listening to somebody, for example, somebody is conversing with you, then you'd listen and be attentive and listen and, and focus. It's not a good manners if someone is talking to you and you're looking well, you're around. Paying, yeah, you're not paying yeah. attention. And it's, it's, that's not a good manner. So if your mom and dad, but you know, in, in school when we used to go and our teachers used to say as well, look at me when I'm talking to you. Yeah. yeah. But in Islam, we don't look at our parents, do we? We should be looking yeah. down, down and we should be yeah. looking and make sure what our parents are saying. Yeah. So mashallah, a very beautiful thing is the way you speak to other people that is what good character is. And also, you know, sometimes children have this habit of crying all the time over little things. Mm -hmm. They might start crying. You know, mom doesn't want them to do something and they'll start arguing with their mom. We shouldn't be doing that as well. You know, we should be listening to them and also make sure that when your parents tell you to do something, good character means that you will listen to them. You know, if they say to you, go and get me a glass of water, don't say, oh, I'm playing my game, you go and get it. No, a good character. Remember this hadith, learn it by heart. And if someone does this at home, they don't listen to their mom and dad, then you can say to them, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, al-birru husnul khuluqi. Now, you just mentioned that if the parent have said to the child, get me a glass of water and... Uh, it's good manners or good character that you go and bring water for your parents. But before even going to the actual action, listening. When they've mentioned, for example, they've asked you to get water, listening the first time. The, uh, nowadays, especially, parents are having to repeat the same thing yeah. a few times before they even listen. So even good character, before we even go to the action, the actual listening part, it should be only said once and Sometimes, you know, you have parents saying to him, are you listening to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're not listening. Indeed. Yeah, and they'll have to repeat that again. Indeed, indeed. So that is not a good thing as well. So <coughs> this is what we are going to adopt in our life. Inshallah. Shall we give a little uh, homework for all the children? Is number one, learn this hadith by heart. And number two is act upon this hadith as well. So make sure that you act upon this hadith. We've learned it today, but we need to start to act upon it as well. Even amongst your friends as well. Yeah, that when you talk to your friends, another sometimes thing is that when you are talking, you know, you seem to be shouting. You know, so a good character is that you don't shout when you talk to someone. You know, okay. only mom and dads are allowed to shout if they're angry, but children are not allowed okay. to shout to their moms and dads, stop screaming and don't do anything like that. Just, you know, be, be kind to your friends. And that's another thing that we need to do about good character okay. is to be kind. So those people who are, have a good character, inshallah, they will have 
a better chances of entering the gardens of paradise. What else do you think that will come into our minds that we can share it to our viewers about you know, having a good character? Not, not lying. Okay. Yeah, not lying. That could be part of a, a good character as well. And because... But when you're meeting, smile. Ji. You know, that's, that's a very big thing, yeah? Indeed. So when you talk to someone, you smile. Yeah? So always have a smile on your face. You know, at home, you know, don't be screaming all the time. Don't be always being in a mood. Don't always be crying all the time. Mm. Because what will happen is if you, if you start to behave like that, your mom and dad could be going through a very difficult time. Okay. You don't know how they will be feeling and they'll be thinking, why are they crying? Why are they not listening to me? And sometimes your mom, she might go and she'll sit in the corner and she'll start crying as well. Not because, you know, she's crying because of someone, she's be crying because of you. And she's upset with you. She's upset with you. So make sure that when, you know, you look after your parents, you make sure that, you know, whatever they want, you will help them. And another thing that we mentioned was lying. Don't have this habit of lying. So if you have the habit of lying from today, let's make this intention. Let's promise to Allah that I will not lie. And inshallah, let's be good Muslims, truthful Muslims. Have you heard of the story of the boy who cried wolf? Yeah, what is that story? Can we have a little repetition? What happens is this, there's this little boy and he's got a habit of lying and he's got some sheer, you know, sheep and one day what happens is he goes, I want to play a trick on the people. Yeah, so he goes and he shouts out, oh, a lion's here, a lion's here. Indeed. So people come running and they say, where's the lion? He goes, ah, I'm only joking. Only joking. You know, as the kids say, ah, ha, 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 I'm Why? just joking. <laughs> so what happens is that, you know, the boy was just joking. So he did that once, he did it twice, he did it a few times. Yeah. And then in actual fact, what happened? Real a lion. real lion came Indeed. and the boy was there. A lion's come, lion's come. So what happens the is no one joking. believes him. People yeah? think he's no joking. one believes him and the lion comes and eats all his sheep. So in the same way, don't be having such a habit that, you know, you keep lying. And then when in reality something does happen and you need people to help you, no one will come to help you. I think if you, if you lie rep repeatedly and then even when you are telling the truth, which was in this case as well with the little boy as well, that uh, even when you are telling the truth, people won't believe you because it's known that you lie. Yeah. And you don't want to be called a liar, do you? So inshallah, another good thing that we're going to start to do is we are not going to lie. Inshallah, so we're going to be being always speaking the truth and inshallah, we will try not to lie again. So that brings us to the end of our second segment where we learned this hadith. Al birru husnul khuluqi. Ji. The next one is where we're going to have a puzzle and we're going to learn from that puzzle as well. Ji. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I love Islam. I love Islam. I love Islam. MashaAllah, we all love puzzles, don't we? All the children will be waiting. I want to see what the puzzle is about. Then here we go. We're going to see which puzzle we're trying to solve for this week. Gee, let's see that puzzle on the screen. It's going to be a word, a muddled up word off the screen but I'm going to try to keep it as long as possible we're going to give you a few minutes see if you can see what that word is it's a very uh, it's a word but I'll tell you it's about a, a, a character as well it's, it's being uh, about being a good or a bad character mashallah gee it's over any chance no no it's very easy yeah okay um, so this puzzle is about a bad thing that people do. Yeah. So uh, shall I tell you what? If uh, what's the middle letter? The middle letter is the R. Yeah. yeah, yeah so that it. helps you quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. So children at home, the middle letter is an R. So what can that word be that has an R in the middle? Oh my God, that is going to be really difficult. 
Okay, I think that's more than enough now. Indeed. Gee, I've already got the correct answer. MashaAllah, it was Ahmad Raza from Manchester. Ahmad Raza from Manchester has got the word. It is swearing. You get it? Yeah, the yeah, middle yeah. word, is the letter is the R. Beautiful, good, congratulations Masha Ahmad Allah. Raza. You know, mashallah, that was wicked. Your dad's gonna give you a pat on the back. Let's see it on the screen as well. Yeah. What was the correct word? See, let's get the, the spelling. Yeah? S, yeah? S, W, E, A, R, E, N, and G, swearing. MashaAllah, we've also got Bisma from Sheffield. Bisma's also got the good, correct answer. Beautiful Bisma. MashaAllah, Azzawajal. That is the correct word, swearing. Now, what can we learn about swearing? Okay, I saw we're going to have a little discussion about that as well. Okay, we've got Afzal Bai from Manchester. He's also got the word correct, mashallah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so we've also got for, from Juvaria, from Sheffield as well. Juvaria's got it right as well. Brilliant stuff. Uh, we've also got, mashallah, Rehan from, Rehan Siddiq At-Tari, uh, Ibn Wahid At-Tari, mashallah, from Sheffield. He's got it right as well. Okay, so the, the puzzle was swearing. What can we learn about swearing? Jesus mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam have mentioned that refrain from indecent talk uh, because Allah Azza wa Jal dislikes vulgar and indecent speech. Sometimes children have this habit of swearing, you know, they might, they might not even realize that they are swearing, mm -hmm. but swearing is really, really bad. But I can remember after when we were in school, uh, and if any child uh, or uh, any student at that time uh, was involved or was caught that he swore, mm -hmm. then the teacher's threatening was that <clears throat> they'd make you bite a bar of soap. Oh my God! I, I, that was really I don't know bad. whether it still happens now, but it, they make you bite a bar of soap. Oh, that is really that's not tasty at all. Yeah. Not, it depends what what, what what it depends um, what flavor that soap is. Uh, if it's one of them, <laughs> you know the the soaps, you know that is like we use it for hand cleaning. That is nasty. Oh my God! And I don't think just imagine at home if you are swearing and your mum tells you you gotta bite the soap oh no that's the last so what we need to do is we need to stop swearing mm -hmm. swearing is really bad and Rehan from Sheffield is saying swearing is also bad as well mm -hmm. yes it is Rehan swearing is bad and swearing is a mm -hmm. sin as well so we need to keep ourselves away from swearing and even who else could not swear Parents should not swear. No, I'm not even going to say them words on the screen. They're shouting. Don't even do that as well. Be good to your to your children, inshallah, azza wa jal. Gee, so that's another thing that we need to learn is we are going to stop swearing from now on. Now, those people who do swear, people don't think them of, uh, as good people. Asab, it's, it's the environment as well, Asab. Gee, you know the environment plays the most. Like for example, you you, you just mentioned about parents. Now, even before the child at a young age, before the child has even gone out and gone into a different environment, the household environment itself, if parents, whether even if it's not directly uh, towards the child, but even if it's parents amongst themselves or other family members amongst themselves, if they're arguing and swearing um, is used, then those younger children, upon hearing, adopt to that because children as as they say is like a clean sheet and whatever you put yeah. on that sheet or whatever you write on we've that. We've got Abdul Mateen from easy. Dewsbury he says swearing is so bad and in your grave there will be a snake. Oh my God, yeah. we don't want a, a creepy coroli snake in our grave do we? So from now on no swearing and guess what? We've got two more videos of our children showing their talent. We are about 13,000 Guru Sharif together. We would like to recite Anna.
Mashallah, mashallah. You know, we had these beautiful children reading the Kalam. Uh, Aisha was reading that beautiful Naat as well. And then three brothers, you know, with the same clothes, red, uh, red Imama Sharif and the white clothes. That was so beautiful, that Naat Park. Uh, we've got uh, Ibrahim uh, from Sheffield. He says, My mom used to say to me, If you swear, I will put chilies in your mouth. Oh, God. Not red ones. No way. Not the red chilies. Yeah. Green, they're bad as well. Okay, so oh, you know, just imagine if your mom is saying to you, I'm going to put chilies in your mouth, you've got to bite a bar of soap. You know, so why? It's because it's strong. So, swearing is so. wrong and we should not be swearing so. at all. So inshallah, Azawajal, let's make this good intention that as being good Muslims, we will not be swearing. I think to some extent, children do understand that swearing is wrong. For example, when they're with their friends or with the younger, with other children, yeah, and if they have a habit of swearing, which is not good, but they're using, you know, foul language amongst mm. themselves. But when an elder or a parent comes, they'll stop. So they do have that understanding that it is wrong, even though they might be doing it. Yeah, so yeah, they do understand that it's wrong, Indeed. but because they're with, they're, like you said, uh, you know, being in the environment. You Indeed. know, so if your if your if your friends are those who swear and lie and <clears throat> and talk bad about other people, then you're going to be the same as well. You know, so it's very very important that we keep ourselves away from these kind of friends, away from this society. Because if we don't and we be with these people, we're going to be really doing bad as well. And as Muslims, we are going to be held responsible on the day of judgment. Let me tell you a story as well. Yeah. Now this story, inshallah, Azawajal, is about uh, a few friends that uh, they come back from uh, school and they see this old man working in the in the fields is a farmer and he's a very old and very poor person and you can see from the clothes that he's wearing they're torn they're dirty you know you can see that this person is a really really poor person so what these group of friends do they say come on let's play a trick on this person so they say oh what trick are you going to play so someone said let's hide his shoes and see what you know we will hide behind the bushes and we'll see when he looks for them and he goes I don't think that's really good that because mm -hmm. if we hide his shoes, he's already an old man. You know, he's already in so many problems mm -hmm. and we're going to add to more, more problems to him. So they all came up with an idea that like, that's what we need to do is I've got some coins with me, some gold coins. We're going to put them into each of his shoe. And when he puts his foot inside, let's see what his reaction is. Yeah. So these children, they put the coin inside the shoe and they hid behind the bush. And this old man, he comes, he's really working hard and it's time to go back home. And you can see that, you know, he's so, the way he's walking that he's not really happy. So these children, when they hide behind the bushes, they see that when he puts his right foot inside the shoe, what happens? There's something inside the shoe. Something in his shoe. So he takes his foot out and he sees it's a gold coin. And he starts to cry and he says, Oh Allah, how can I thank you? My children are going to have something to eat today because you've blessed me with this coin. And then yeah. when he puts his left foot inside first, he sees another gold coin. And what happens is he cries again and he goes, Ya Allah, my children haven't eaten for days and they haven't had some good clothes to wear. Now I can go and get some clothes for them. So these children that are hiding behind the bush, what happens? Yeah. 
they all start to cry as well because mm. they played a trick on this year old man but they played a trick that is brought tears to their mm. eyes so children if you want to make someone smile if you want to bring a smile on someone's face play a trick just like these kids play a trick on him but they made him smile don't play a trick on anyone that's going to make a person hurt that's going to make a person cry bring a smile to them shall i just read a message out from hadia from sheffield and she says mashallah very very good program very very good messages jazakallah khaira so alhamdulillah if you are watching this program make sure that you are good to your mom you're good to your dad and grandpa and grandma as well okay we got hamad from rochdale hamad is a teenager i'm watching this program with my mom and she keeps giving me them <coughs> evils and talking about the jahiliyat days ji i don't blame your mom hamad she, she's doing a great job uh, let's go towards our next segment inshallah azza wa jal sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i love this i love this i love Islam 14 Mashallah so now the last segment we have uh, is about the Islamic quotes let's see what we're going to learn today on our screen yesterday i was clever so i wanted to change the world today i am wise so i am changing myself and this was a beautiful we're going to try to keep you on the screen for a little while said by sayyiduna jalaluddin rumi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi what is the quote yesterday i was clever so i wanted to change the world today i am wise so i am changing myself jeet sabur bhai what do you have to say regarding that quote and who is jalaluddin rumi do you want to tell our children who jalaluddin rumi is subhanallah we were speaking earlier regarding um, how one can be a friend of allah azza wa jal ji now this buzurg uh, rahmatullah taala lay was a pious one of our pious predecessors and they were a friend a wali of allah azza wa jal so they um, gained a great rank alhamdulillah if we start doing good improve our character uh, and uh, stop lying and tell the truth um, and listen to our parents inshallah azza wa jalla will gain that closeness and that friendship with allah azza wa jalla and then slowly but surely inshallah azza wa jalla will gain that friendship and if allah so wills will become do you know where jalaluddin rumi is buried okay <laughs> Uh, t- Turkey, I think, is it? It is in Turkey. Yeah. Do you know which city it is in? Put on the spot. Uh, I, okay, I that could be a game that we, me and you, mm-hmm. can play now. Maybe yeah. if the children are watching and they know where he is, <clears throat> can you help Uncle Tsavur tell us where Jalaluddin Rumi is buried, where his Mazar-e uh-huh. Park is? Okay, Tsavur, but I'll give you a clue. <clears throat> It's in Turkey. Yes, yes. I mentioned that I was in Turkey. Okay, that's another clue for you. It's <laughs> in Turkey itself. Okay, another clue for you. It's not in Istanbul. Did it? I know it's not in Istanbul. So <laughs> I can't give you more than that. I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, Jalaluddin <laughs> Rumi, Rahmatullah Alayhi's Mazar is in Kicking K. That's the first letter. Kids as well, if you're watching at home, it's in Kicking K, <coughs> not the curly K, the, curly the Kicking K. The Mazar is there. Whereabouts is it? I'll tell you the second letter later on. The second letter. It's a very famous city. Okay. It's been mentioned to me. I was just it's not coming to mind. But don't worry inshallah. Okay, the sir I tell you the next letter then. Go Shall on, we okay. tell him the next letter do you think? Uncle gives us stuff here so we need to help him. The next letter is O. So we've got kicking k and we've got an o. Okay. Go. Come here. Konya. Konya, mashallah, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> Shabir <laughs> Bhai from PCR got it right already. So, Sayyiduna <laughs> Jalaluddin Rumi, rahmatullah alayhi, Mazar is in Konya, and you know, mashallah, as well, we got Haji Wahid from Sheffield. Oh, he's active today. I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Abu Rehan is really, really active today. I bet he's at his wheat a big sunny. Ji, mashallah, as well. So, this Mazar-e Park is in. 
Konya. Now, <clears throat> Konya is in Turkey, Alhamdulillah. I've had the blessing of visiting the Mazare Park. We took a, uh, in actual fact, we took, we took a, a Madani Kafira to uh, Konya as well, mashallah. So, Jalaluddin Rumi, Rahmatullah Ali, the beautiful quote that he gave us was that yesterday I was going to try to change the whole world and I'm going to change myself. And that is what we need to do. You know, sometimes you always think, he needs to be better. He needs to change himself. Indeed. But you know what? When you are pointing towards someone Indeed. else, these three fingers of yours are pointing to yourself. may change yourself first. Mm. So this is what we need to do. We need to change ourselves first. MashaAllah Azza wa Jal. Gee, we've got Abid Bay from Bolton. MashaAllah Azza wa Jal. Abid Bay is saying, Turkey Konya. Saib Raza Attari, MashaAllah, Abid by son, Saib. Is it Saib or is it Siab? The spelling has been sent to me as I don't want to get it wrong and get, you know, next time when I visit Bolton, I don't want Saib to be waiting outside with a baseball bat. Do I now? No. Okay. Abdul Mateen, he said his shrine is situated in Konya. Abdul Mateen. That's uh, when you heard us say that, did you mention it or did you know it beforehand? If you knew it beforehand, <coughs> very good Allah. boy. If you heard us, then no problem, still a good boy because yeah. we're yeah. all listen, here listen and learn. learning. Listen. G, mashallah. Okay, so, uh, oh, Rehan sent a message, I think he's, he's been using it, that's a problem, isn't it? He's been using his dad phone and I was thinking it was, is his dad, yeah? So, it is. Uh, it was not my dad, it was me, Rehan. I've been there. Wicked Masha stuff, Allah. Rehan. Brilliant. MashaAllah, Rehan's been to Turkey as well. So, MashaAllah, that's excellent. Uh, I've also got another message from someone. Uh, this is from Mahboob Naqshbandi from Sheffield. Mazar is in Istanbul in Konya. MashaAllah, Azzawajal. Anyone else uh, who wants to tell us uh, about Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali. Oh, we've got some promises. We've so got some promises now. Yeah. <laughs> His shrine is situated in Konya. I knew it before. I promise you. Yeah. So, uh, Abdul Mateen is yes, not lying. Yes. And we, we, we said lying yes. is really bad. So, I don't have a doubt about that as well. Mashallah. Yes, yes. I've got a message from someone. Salam Mubarak <laughs> on your new program. I love Islam. Mashallah. Why not all say it in one voice? Do you think so? Yeah. Kids are home. Yes. Are you ready, guys and geysers? Are you ready? We're going to say, I love Islam. Your mum or dad might be watching with you, but inshallah, we're going to put our hands up and we're going to say, I, I love Islam. Islam. Mashallah. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> oh my God. Subhanallah. Brilliant. Mashallah. Okay, Sabarbaik, coming back to the serious stuff now. <laughs> I don't know. We've, we've been in uh, too much of a childish behavior now. Gee, so Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala what message can we give to the children about his message, that his beautiful quote that we learned today? That, you know, you, sometimes a person thinks that I'm more clever. You have this sometimes, you know, amongst the children that I'm more better than you. You know, however, I, I, we had an instance where children are talking, my dad's better, better than, than your yours. dad. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, yeah, that, you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, everyone's dad is better, mashallah, because everyone loves their dad and we should all have love for our parents as well. But what we need to do is we need to think to ourselves, that instead of worrying about changing other people, let's change ourselves. Indeed. That's what Jalaluddin Rumi Rahmatullah really meant, that you're mm. supposed to be changing yourself. Look at yourself. Shall I tell you a story? Go on. Yeah, it's not a bedtime story. It's an evening meal story. A... So the story goes that a person, he goes to Hassan Basri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he says to him, that when you talk to people, people accept Islam. They love you so much. They accept Islam as soon as you say something to him. When I go, they don't even listen to me. Why is that? So Mawlana Hassan Basri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he says that um, go and look at yourself in the mirror and just look at yourself. You need to change yourself first. Yeah? So, Mawlana Hassan Basri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he says to that man and that person, 
he goes back home and he says, what's wrong with me? You know, sometimes you don't know what's wrong in, you know, what's wrong inside yourself. Mm. So he stood in front of the mirror and he goes, <clears throat> oh my God, look at me. I'm not even looking like a Muslim. So what he did was he started to look like a Muslim, wear clothing like Muslims. You know, his face, mashallah, you know, he started to grow the beautiful sunnah like a Muslim. And then he, a few days later, he went out and he was talking to this non-Muslim. And as he was talking to him, and he says, would you accept Islam? And he goes, why not? You're such a beautiful person. You've got such a beautiful character. Why not? I would accept Islam. So he was so happy. So he went to Hassan Basri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that, you know, I was talking to someone today and he has accepted Islam. And Hassan Basri radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to him that when you changed yourself, now when you would say to people, they will change by looking at you as well. So you so, focus on yourself first. So we focus on ourselves first. Yeah. As they say, look inside your heart. <clears throat> I don't mean it literally look inside your heart because you won't be able to. Yeah, just look into yourself and think, what is wrong with me? You know, sometimes children, they say, oh, he doesn't want to play with me. Yeah, well, why is my, there might be something wrong? Okay, we've got a few messages, mashallah. Uh, Salam, I am Binte Suhail from Norwich, UK, and I love Islam. Is awesome. So, wow, uh, awesome. Uh, mashallah. <laughs> I will listen to my parents now and I will not swear. So, uh, oh, backbite. And any hell leading acts, inshallah. inshallah. That is beautiful. We've also mashallah. got Muhammad Rafi. And from where? I don't know. Wherever you are, Rafi, Allah knows where you are, mate. So Alhamdulillah, Rafi says the answer is swearing. Okay, that puzzle that we had before. Puzzle. Wicked okay. stuff, Mashallah. Rafi. So that's brilliant. Uh, let me read out another message and we've got some more videos as well. Mashallah. My name is Muhammad Qasim Attari from Warsaw. I am watching your program with my brother and my Amiji. And she keeps on reminding us to be good Muslims and make good intention. Inshallah, that's it. You know, we need to listen to our mom. We need to listen to our dad and be good Muslims. Let's go to the videos and see what talent we're going to see now, inshallah. <laughs> MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Did you, did you see that little boy reading that kalam and how he was swaving, MashaAllah. That was so beautiful. And the azan, oh, that was awesome, MashaAllah. Beautiful guys, that's what we want to see. We want to see your talent. And this is a talent, you know, show it to people. For you know, that little boy, MashaAllah, as well, was reading the nad and for the one who was giving the azan. Give a pat on your back from me. Yeah, tap yourself. That's brilliant. You did very good, MashaAllah. And we've also got a message from Shazen Ali Noman from Doncaster. You know where Doncaster is? Yeah, it's in England. Ji, Doncaster is in England. Mashallah. It's, 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 in, it's in Yorkshire, isn't it? Yeah, so Shazen, he says, I love this program. I am watching it with my family. My need is to watch this program every week. Mashallah. Wicked stuff, Shazen. That's what we want to see. We want you to be watching it every single week. And inshallah, not only yourself, 
We mm. want you to be watching it with your friends. Tell your friends, pick up the phone and tell your friends, did you watch Uncle Rafaqat and Uncle Tasawwur? Oh, uh, shall I call myself Granddad Tasawwur? Yeah, Basha. you're a granddad anyway, MashaAllah. <laughs> Gee, I'm still an uncle though, so that's all right. G. We've also got a message from Hasib from Sheffield. I love Islam is the best program on TV. MashaAllah Azawajal. Really, really glad to see all these messages coming back. Uh, oh, we've also got a message from Arush Ahmed from Dhabi. Where's Dhabi, do you know? Gigi. Yeah, Midlands. It's in the East Midlands, mashallah. Dabi is in the East Midlands. And it says, I love Islam. Mashallah. I am enjoying the program, mashallah. Brilliant stuff. Uh, another message that we've got. Let's watch another talent on this program. G. Mashallah, Mashallah. If I'm not wrong, that could be our Siabai's daughter from Manchester. If I'm correct, then I get a point. Mashallah. We've got a message from, uh, it says, Salam, hope you are well. My little sister, Zuner, oh, Zuner is tuned into your program and enjoying it. Love it, mashallah. Jazakallah, Zuner. I hope you're, you are enjoying it. I hope your parents are enjoying it. And if you have a bigger brother, I hope he's enjoying, enjoying it as it well. Too. Okay, well, I've got another message from... Oh my, shall I read the outside? But you know he's from? It's from Khalid Bay. MashaAllah. He's from Khalid Bay. Oh, and I better Oops. put myself straight. Let me just put my clothes on properly because he's the boss. Okay, Khalid Bay is writing. Fantastic program. I can't do what you are, what you're doing. And I don't think I'm the right person to be with you. Oh my God, words of wisdom from our Nigran Sahib. MashaAllah. You know, if you were here, we could have smashed it really. I. But MashaAllah, Aswadar. Jazakallah khaira for your support, Khalid Bhai. Allah Ta'ala reward you and give you Shifai Kamila as well, MashaAllah, Aswadar. We've also got a message uh, from Habib. MashaAllah, from Mashallah. Sheffield. You know where Sheffield is? Ji, it's in South not Yorkshire. Ji, so. MashaAllah. I'm going to say not so far from Doncaster. <laughs> MashaAllah. Okay, shall we read out the message of Habiba? Habiba says, Assalamu alaikum Hafiz Sahib. Wa alaikum as -salam. I love Islam is a very amazing program. I have learned a lot in just today's program from Habiba Shafil. Jazakallah Habiba. I hope you not only learned, but you also said that you enjoy this program. And that's what it's all about. It's about enjoying it. It's about learning as well. And inshallah, when you get these two mixed together, enjoying it and learning it, you get a beautiful result. Just like you have a strawberry and a raspberry joined together. You have a beautiful flavor. Gee, mashallah. We've got another message from... Uh, it says, MashaAllah, I make my whole family watch this channel. That's so what we want to hear. Wow. We love it. Tashfeen and Arsalan. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khaira. Tashfeen and Arsalan. Do me a favor. I want you to go to the whole street and tell them we watch Madani channel. I'm only joking. Don't worry. You can go to your family and your friends and ask them to read this as well. Uh, we've got another message from Arsalan and Tashfeen. You know where they're from? Halifax. Where's Halifax? Halifax. It's down the road. Yeah. 
Ali Fox is just down the road, mashallah. And they say, up the road. <laughs> yes, uh, it's, it's up the road is Ali Fox. And they say, I love Islam. That is brilliant, mashallah. We Masha all love Islam. And alhamdulillah, we will love Islam until the last breath of our life, inshallah. inshallah. I'm getting so much messages. I'll just read a few more. This is the most amazing program. I love Islam. I hope everyone watch this program with my sisters, with my mom and my dad and my baby sister. Hello, baby sister. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, mashallah. This was from Abdul Mateen from Dewsbury. Abdul Mateen's on fire, mashallah. Gee, we've also uh, got another message. Uh, she's been laughing with you. It's a very good one. Well done. MashaAllah. Jazakallah. This was from Habiba. She was smiling, laughing. No, no. Smiling. Always better. Always good. And um, I, I think that's about it. We had a fantastic program. We've got one minute left. Let me just tell you for the whole week what we need to do at home. Number one is we learned about the facts of Allah Ta'ala. Teach them to your friends. Number two, we learned the hadith. Which one was it? Al birru husnul khuluqi. You're an alim, that makes it easier for you. Al birru husnul khuluqi. Goodness is the name of good character. Goodness is a name of good character. MashaAllah <laughs> uh, And also, uh, we learned the quiz swearing or oh, no swearing. All this week, what we need to do is Refrain. no swearing, no backbiting, and inshallah, watching Madani channel. Jazakallah khaira for all the children. And inshallah, azawajal, I will see you with Uncle Tusawwur next week, inshallah. inshallah. Same place, same time, inshallah. Don't forget, Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I love Islam, I love Islam, I love Islam. I love Islam, I love Islam, I love Islam.